It's probably no surprise that I consume all the cocktail content that I can. Not only do I watch a lot of YouTube videos from creators that I like and read every single cocktail book I can get my hands on, but I also, of course, read the three major cocktail websites, Punch, Imbibe, and Liquor.com. And while perusing Punch, I came upon their list of the most popular drinks of 2022. Now, the only thing that I love more than a cocktail list is a retrospective list from the last year. Of the 10 cocktails that they published, a few really caught my eye, and so I thought it would be kind of fun to make them and assess them. And I'm assuming that what Punch decided was the most popular drinks of 2022 had to be the collection of drinks which resonated most with their readers. So let's dive in and see what they were excited about last year, and let's see how these drinks uh, perform when we drink them and not just read about them, shall we? Today's video is sponsored by Shaker and Spoon. Shaker and Spoon is a cocktail subscription box service. Shaker and Spoon partners up with award-winning bartenders for each box. In every box, you get recipes for three different cocktails and enough to make 12 cocktails in each box. I think that the value in these boxes and why I really love them is because it's a very easy way to try some very interesting cocktails with intricate ingredients without having to go and buy a whole bunch of stuff at the store, all of the soda, bitters, syrups, spices, everything that you need, including the garnishes inside this box. So all you need to do is provide the booze and try something really great. And I gotta tell you guys, these cocktails are super high end and I love them. Here you go, you have your first recipe card. It tells you all about the cocktail up here. And then on the other side, it gives you a picture of how the cocktail should look. So you know what type of glassware and ice to use. Oh, that's really cool. So you actually have to make a coconut water ice cube to make this cocktail. That's pretty interesting. Ooh, that's pretty good old fashioned. Good job, Jessica Sanders. Just click the link in the description below or scan the QR code and type in code BARFLY at checkout or go to shakerandspoon.com slash barfly for $20 off your first order. That's shakerandspoon.com slash barfly for $20 off your first box. The Gem is a proto-tiki drink first published in William Schmidt's The Flowing Bowl in 1891. And of course, the original recipe is a little bit problematic, as are a lot of old cocktails. All the flavors make a lot of sense for like a great cocktail, but the directions call for the juice of one lime and a little pineapple syrup. So this cocktail would be very inconsistent if you made it that way. After all, lime size is variable, and and a little pineapple syrup really could mean just about anything at all. So what I gotta say is thank God for modern bartenders. So today's gem cocktail reconstruction comes from a Massachusetts bartender named Ned King. And it looks like it's gonna be an incredibly refreshing 1800s daiquiri riff created, interestingly, before the daiquiri. So first thing, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. And then we're gonna do a half an ounce of two to one pineapple syrup. So this is two parts cane sugar to one part pineapple juice. And I used fresh pineapple juice, but if you have a very good 100% juice bottled pineapple juice, you could use that too, I guess. Half an ounce of pineapple syrup one dash of Angostura bitters. And then we're gonna do an equal parts, one ounce of Jamaican rum, one ounce of Pierre Friend 1840 cognac. You can use other cognac, but this is what the original recipe called for, so I'm using that. That being said, if you had some like Hein VSOP fine champagne or something like that, feel free to use that. And this drink would probably work pretty well with most high quality brandy. Just make sure it's grape brandy, not like pear or something. Give it a shake. And then to garnish, just a little grated cinnamon. All right, let's taste it. Wow, that's tart and sweet in all the right places. Very well balanced from the pineapple syrup, but it's not overly pineapple-y. You do get the nice kind of pineapple vibe to it. It is tropical without being sweet or overly tropical, if that makes sense. It's just like a hint of tropical. You get a nice aroma and a little bit of flavor from that cinnamon right there, making things a little bit spicy and warm. And then obviously you taste the Jamaican rum, uh, but it pairs really well with the cognac. It has just a really nice kind of warm flavors and you get a little bit of those tropical flavors from the Jamaican rum. So here it is, the gem. The Milano Torino is the iconic Italian two-ingredient drink which predates the Negroni. And essentially, it's a Negroni without gin, or if you prefer to think about it this way, it's the Amer an Americano without soda water. The version that we're doing today gives it a sour makeover. It's by Los Angeles bartender Dan Sabo. And so, of course, it's called the Milano Torino Sour. First thing we're gonna do, grab our tin here. We're gonna do half an ounce of lime juice. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of grapefruit juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, 
one ounce of dry vermouth, all right, so we're switching out the sweet for dry, and one ounce of Campari. And what's nice about this cocktail is you can switch out the Campari for different bitter aperitivos to get slightly different flavor profiles. You can switch out your dry vermouth for, uh, from other producers that are gonna bring up different botanicals. And you can really kind of play with the template of this drink, which is really nice. You could even switch out the dry vermouth for something like Blanc Vermouth if you want something a little bit more light, a little delicate, maybe a touch sweeter. All right, grab an, we're gonna grab an egg here and we're going to separate the yolk from the white. And we're gonna do our dry shake, or reverse dry shake, or you could even use a milk frother if that's what you wanna do and make it easier for yourself. I'm just gonna do it the traditional way right now. Give it a nice 30 seconds. Shake as hard as you can. Make sure to really emulsify that egg. We're gonna add in our ice. Eight to 10 seconds. And then strain. Oh, that is like creamy and bitter and beautiful. All right, so we've got the grapefruit. Really gra pronounced grapefruit flavor, of course. It's not tart enough to carry this cocktail, so it gets a little bit of help from the lime juice, which is balanced out by simple syrup. You have your Campari and grapefruit combo, which really is the body of this cocktail. You get a little bit of botanicals, and you get a little bit, touch more sweetness, touch more sugar from the dry vermouth. It's really, really nice, nicely done cocktail. There is a version of the Clover Club, which is my favorite version, which actually cuts a little dry vermouth into that egg white cocktail, just really, playing up a little bit of the sweetness, but then also giving this botanicals. And it kind of reminds me of that, just sort of, not in its flavor profile necessarily, but in the way it kind of hits your palate, if that makes sense. Uh, so there it is, the Milano Torino Sour. The rum old fashion that we're doing right now was created by New York City bartender Jelani Johnson, and it's a blend of three different rums that I'm super excited to try. Just as an FYI, it's gonna be very difficult to sub out some of the rums. I'm gonna put some of the subs that I think you can use down below. I don't wanna get into it now because it's just too much to say. So first things first, you wanna make sure that you have your ice sitting out and tempering. Um, but we're gonna actually build this in a mixing glass. We're not gonna be building it in the glass itself like I usually do for old fashions. Okay, we're gonna just do one dash of Angostura bitters. And we're gonna do the equivalent of one dash of these tiki bitters, but because they're in a dropper, we're gonna to have to do like 10 drops here. So one, two. Then we're gonna do one teaspoon of our uh, like rich cane syrup here. One teaspoon of Smith & Cross rum. Kind of a big teaspoon, but that's all right. Half an ounce of Hamilton 151. And one and a half ounces of Mount Gay XO. Crack our first cube. And maybe our second too. Add some ice pieces in there. We're gonna actually take an orange peel here and we're just gonna express the oils into the stirring glass and throw that peel in there and do a little regal stir. And we're gonna take our glass here, put in our nice big piece of ice. If you wanna under stir this, you can because it will be sitting on a rock of ice. So it's still gonna get dilution. And then we're just gonna strain here. Last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut a little lime disc here, like so. And we're just gonna express that over the cocktail and garnish with it. There it is, Jelani Johnson's Rum Old Fashioned. Let's take a sip. Very excited about this one. That might be one of the best rum old fashions I think I've ever had. It is nuanced in flavor. It has a little bit of orange zest to it, giving it that nice kind of sweetness, but then you also have lime in there as well, making it really nice and tart and giving it that lime flavor. The rum blend is masterful. You get the overproof in there. You feel it in there and it's a little bit hot, but like almost spicy, like barely spicy on the back of your palate. The blend of rums is just really nice. It's incredibly balanced but it's also rich, but not too rich. It's very full flavored. It, it hits you everywhere on your palate, which is pretty crazy. You know, you taste the Jamaican rum in there. You get a little bit of that spicy overproof, but it's not crazy hot. The Mount Gay really does a really good job of just being like, like kind of the cohesive backbone of the cocktail. This is fantastic. This is something that I would make over and over and over and over again. Uh, the Mount Gay XO is not a very inexpensive bottle. I think it's about 65 bucks in my market. It can be even higher other places, uh, but this is just like a decadent kind of special occasion cocktail that I, I, I would drink it all the time if I could. So there it is, the rum old fashioned.
The Division Bell was created by New York City bartender Phil Ward, and it's a bit of a cheat to have this cocktail on the list because we've already made it on the channel in the past, and you know what? It's great, I really love it. It's very easy to see why it's a favorite. The drink was created in 2009 at the now defunct Brooklyn Tequila and Mezcal Bar and makes uh, good use of the last word paper plane template to just to highlight the Mezcal's kind of versatility in cocktails. There's a lot of people that have said Mezcal can really overrun a lot of flavor profiles in cocktails. I don't really find that to be true as long as you're using nice, quality mezcal, and also that the varietal of the agave works for the cocktail. All right, so first things first, grab our tin. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of Aperol, half an ounce of maraschino liqueur, and one ounce of mezcal. Grab a glass. Give it a nice shake. And strain. We're just gonna give this a nice grapefruit twist. Ooh, I love the smell of that grapefruit oil coming off the peel. It's so good. Curl this and do one of those. Just simple. Here. I'd like to do it this way though. Looks better. Okay, here we go. Cheers. so wonderfully balanced. What's nice about it is that you're not using simple syrup to balance that lime. It's nice and tart. You've got the Aperol bitterness. You get that really good grapefruit Aperol combo. A little bit of that, you know, kind of salinity, tiny bit of smoke, and then a kind of a roasted agave flavor from the mezcal. It is a fantastic mezcal cocktail. It is perfectly balanced. It is nice and refreshing. The Division Bell, my friends. All right, guys, there you have it. Four of Punch's most popular cocktails of 2022. Were these the best cocktails we had this year? I don't know, but they were fantastic. They are worth a mix. So go get it, mix them, and be happy. And I'll see you guys on another time. For today's pro tip, I thought we would do just a demonstration. I have been getting a ton of messages about how to do egg white sours properly. There've been a few people hitting me up in the comments telling me that they had a really hard time getting a good amount of foam. And so I wanna just show you guys best practices for making the best possible egg white sour that you can. So the first thing that I'm gonna say is you wanna build your egg white sours in two different tins. I always like to build my cocktail in this small tin. And then when I go to crack my egg, I put it in the big tin. So if I mess up, I'm not completely ruining my cocktail. Okay, so I used to crack my eggs on the side of the tin, but a lot of people would just hit me up and say, oh, well, the edge is too sharp on the side of a tin, and if you do it that way, you're gonna push the shell up into the egg, and it's gonna, all the bacteria from the outside of the egg is gonna get inside the egg. And I guess while that is technically possible, I've never seen that happen, and I've never seen any type of, you know, kind of food illness happen because of that. Best practices is to crack your egg on a flat surface, and then you get just like a really nice, even kind of spider web here. And it's just easy to break open. And so we're just gonna break this egg open and we're gonna separate that white from the yolk. And then we're gonna put that yolk aside and make a prairie oyster with it or something. What I like about cracking the egg on the outside of the tin is that you get a really nice sharp line and then it basically cracks almost in half. I did this at the bar that I worked at for 10 years. No one ever had a problem. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do this and I don't wanna argue about shaking, reverse dry shaking, dry shaking, whatever. We're just gonna show you this kind of the standard way to do this. And this is basically the dry shake. So before you have any ice in here, you're gonna wanna shake the cocktail just with the egg white that you have in here. And so you can just marry your cocktail in like so. I like to give it a couple seconds to combine and then we're gonna give it a 30 second shake. And what we're gonna try and do here is we're gonna try and shake in such a way that is very vigorous movement, all right? And this is going to uh, circulate air on the inside of the tin and this is going to whip the egg white into a meringue, basically. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shake it and you can do this for as long as you want, but 30 seconds is about what you wanna do, half a minute or so. So now, you should see this have a lot of foam already. The inside of it should look like that. If it doesn't look like this, you're already in trouble. If you don't see a lot of foam already from that dry shake, then something has gone wrong in your sour making process. So what could have gone wrong? I've been troubleshooting this a lot in my, in my head. And you know, there's a few people who have hit me up and said like, oh, you use entire egg white. That seems like a lot. I like to only use half an ounce or I only like to use a quarter of an ounce. If you use a quarter of an ounce of egg white in a drink, that's like, I don't know, three to four ounces in volume. And then you add you know, dilution to that, you're gonna kill the foam, which is what kind of brings us to our next technique thing. So the volume of egg white shouldn't really be a problem because it's not adding flavor profile 
profile to the cocktail. It's adding a lot of texture to your cocktail though. So the thing is, is that the less egg white you have, the less texture you're gonna have. All right, we can't, you know, talk for too long because this is gonna die. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to add ice. The shape of your ice is really important. You want to make sure that you use a big rock of ice such as this. This is going to give you a very low amount of dilution, but then it's going to give you superior texture. Now, a lot of people say that this doesn't give enough dilution in the cocktail. I actually don't find that to be true, but you know, I'm not going to like argue with experts. I'm just going to say that if you're worried about the amount of dilution that you get, you use this big rock of ice and then you take a smaller cube. And when you put that cheater cube in there, you're going to shake it and you're going to listen to the cocktail as you shake it. And you're going to be able to hear that little piece of ice floating around. And you basically want to shake until you don't hear that little piece of ice, you know, banging around the tin anymore. So we just add in our ice like this. If your ice is directly out of the freezer, it's going to be brittle. And when it hits the liquid, it's going to crack. If you hear it crack, just let it set. But if you don't want that problem, you can just let your ice sit out to temper and then you won't crack inside your tin. Okay. And then we're just going to give it a shake. And we're just going to listen for that cheater cube and make sure that it's all gone before we pour it. I don't think I hear it anymore. Okay, then that's it. Now you want to make sure that you pick the right volume of glass for your drink because egg white expands. And so the volume of the cocktail is going to greatly expand when you shake it with ice. I like to double strain just to make sure that there's no ice pieces. And then we pour like so. And there we have our egg white sour. So we just remade the Milano Torino from this video. And as you can see, you get a really nice foam here. As this thing sets, you will be able to see it separate and you'll have a nice foam top on top and you'll have your cocktail on the bottom. So that is how you properly make an egg white cocktail. Oh, and if you're using alternatives like aquafaba or any other type of like, I don't know, soy lecithin solution or anything to make a vegan sour, just make sure you use about an ounce, three quarters of an ounce to an ounce to get that nice foam. There it is.